<clears throat> Good morning. Wow, what a morning it's been for me so far. The title that I've selected for today is 2012, Waking Up Wired and Inspired. <laughs> and I wrote a little blurb. Well, I got two to three hours of sleep before I woke up in a flood of inspiration. For more than a week, I have been researching and preparing my response to the court in regard to the hearing about my home. It is a draining process, and I would rather do many other things than wade through the complex maze of our legal system. Of course, my task is to deal with what is in front of me. I did not have the proper conclusion before turning out the lights last night, but I woke up wired and ready to complete the task. I didn't know when I went to bed how to draw all the things that I had gathered to a close. And when I came to the computer this morning, probably 1.30, I know, I know it was after 1 o'clock, but I don't think it was past 1.30, I really don't know because I couldn't, I wanted to go back to sleep and I couldn't because what kept coming to me was get up, I, we're showing you now. And it was like inspiration was there. And so I deleted a bunch of the stuff that I had uh, tentatively planned to use. And I was given the conclusion. I was actually I was shown that before I even, my feet even hit the floor that I didn't need to, that the three affidavits that I included in the document and a conclusion was all that was necessary. And I'm going to read the conclusion to you and then tell you what else this thing contains. So for those of you that are facing foreclosure or have friends that are facing foreclosure and are dealing with the courts, some of what I'm going to share may be useful for you. And if it's not, then just watch another video on another day. Uh, but this is where I am today and I'm going to just share not everything. I'm not going to read the entire nine pages that I ended up with, but I'm feeling like it's complete even though I've gone back and tweaked some things that I I read the first two pages to you yesterday and I did add a couple of things and tweak a little bit on what I presented a couple of days ago. Uh, but here's the conclusion that I came up with today and I'm actually reading it to you, and it's titled, Conclusion. I, Ronald Thomas Van Dyke, as a living man, retaining all my rights guaranteed by the law of the land, have absolute dominion and authority over all legal fictions created by we the people to serve us in the evolution of our consciousness. Within this document, I have established my status and set the stage according to natural common law for the just and equitable disposition of this matter by establishing facts necessary for final resolution in this case. It is my intention to participate in the hearing scheduled for the 18th day of May 2012 at 11.45 a.m., in regard to PNC's motion to strike objections and motion to strike counterclaim before John M. Harris, presiding judge, acting under his oath of office in support and defense of the United States and Florida constitutions in which he has pledged his honor and office to uphold all rights guaranteed therein on behalf of the people he is lawfully beholden to serve. It is my intention to bring with me at least two observers in order to view the proceedings. Having been the victim of serious crimes against my natural person, I retain all rights to bring suit at law against all parties involved, natural and fictional, according to U.S. Code, Title 42, and any other just laws on record within the common law of the United States of America and the state of Florida. Any such suit 
shall be filed in an appropriate venue, having full authority under God and before man to assure justice and bring remedy and res restitution to injured parties. I also retain my right as it rights as expressed in the negative averment and the notice of default filed with this court in February of this year. No judge or officer of the court has any lawful authority to dismiss or strike this document or any other filed in the public record for this case, including the negative averment, the notice of default, the several affidavits, and the counterclaim. And I do not and will not give my consent, which is required by law. Notice to principal is notice to agent, and notice to agent is notice to principal. Now I kept the three affidavits that I had prepared, an affidavit of status, which basically declares who I am under the law, as the law sees me, and what venues of court uh, are permitted to deal with me as a natural person, a human being, not the straw man, not the legal fiction created by the government, but the natural man that we are born with our, our natural rights that are unalienable and unalienable. Then I have an affidavit of interest, which states very clearly the position that I that I have in relationship to the home that I'm living in, be it, it is a homestead, and I have filed documents over the years, including this year, uh, in which I have claimed ownership of the property and established it with a land patent, which is the latest, the latest accomplishment that has been done actually since the alleged sale of my property at auction on February the 15th. So the affidavit of interest presents before the court my lawful claim to this property and then I filed an affidavit of rebuttal uh, to rebut the claims of the third party intervener which is PNC National Bank and there's some very interesting things that I included in there because there is a list of, of things that are required in order for a contract to be valid. Any one of them voids any la any one of them lacking voids the contract and there are four areas yes I believe four areas that I cited uh, that void the contract it was void at inception because it requires two parties both of which two parties on on opposite sides each making uh, a contribution to the thing it's it's not it can't be a one-sided thing and there was no, there was none, and there never is a signature of the lending institution on on any mortgage or auto loan or anything like that. The bank and so-called lending institution never lends anyone money. They don't even have money to lend. That is a fiction, and it is well known that when the note is signed by the alleged borrower <laughs> that that is the actual negotiable instrument that is the actual value and the bank or lending institution deposits it as an asset on the asset side of their bookkeeping and they give you a receipt generally a check or some other receipt for what they have received from you. But they didn't tell you that they were receiving the value from you. They didn't tell you that. And, and absent them making full disclosure of the, of the nature of the proceeding of the contract voids the contract. And they gave you no, cons no consideration of value. They gave you a receipt for your value that you put into it. Now you say to me, Ron, but I didn't, ha I didn't put any value into it. You didn't think you did, but you did because your natural rights guarantee you certain things. Everything is prepaid in God's kingdom. Everything is prepaid. We have everything that we need provided for us freely, and that is the natural realm of things. 
It's always freely provided. We've been living in a fictional system which is built on fraud and deception. And so the bank gave no consideration. Another thing that they failed in, and I can't remember, what was the fourth thing? Oh, there has to be the ability to fulfill the obliga any obligation of the contract. If that ability is removed and, it, and it's not the fault of the, of the first party involved, they are exempt from having to fulfill the contract. And in my particular case, I didn't know all of this when paperwork was originally signed and I took out a bridge loan on a different property than the one that I'm living in, by the way, just so that you know. It wasn't on this property. This property never had a mortgage. It never had it was never identified in any of the initial paperwork that the PNC Bank is using to try to attach this property to. But the, 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 there was paperwork. There was a bridge loan, which is was called a mortgage. It was a six-month loan, uh, payable in full at the at the end or at any time during the six months at which time the property that was uh, securing, supposedly securing the loan, uh, was sold. And my intention was to sell the property. I had an offer in, I think it was the very first month. I, I can't remember, but it was an $870,000 offer. And of course, the lawsuit hit and uh, the, the offer was withdrawn and then there was another offer toward the end of that year in November, I believe, of $850,000. And, and when it was revealed that there was a lawsuit, that offer was also uh, taken back. So the place still sits vacant. They tried to sell it last year for $275,000. That's how much value, uh, property value has gone down, even though it's a riverfront property. Uh, on the Indian River in one of the most pristine, uh, or I should say one of the most prestigious uh, areas of real estate within this county, south, the southern end of, of Merritt Island. It's, it's a, a two-thirds of an acre plot of land, plan, plot of land, riverfront property. That is the property that was named in the, in the note, never my property never my property. But anyway, the I rebutted all of the things. Now, I was going to put some, some other things in there regarding uh, Title 42 lawsuits and stuff like that. I was going to go into much more detail, and I had, had other things about maxims of law and, and stuff that I've really, some of which I've really covered in previous documentation that has been presented before the court. And I was told, just strike all of that. Just leave those pages out and just put in your conclusion. You've done enough with the three affidavits. You've got your case, your points made, and your case is resolved by law. And there's really nothing that they can do about it because I, it is so ironclad, open and shut. I mean, they've ignored everything. They're not going to be able to ignore this. They're, I I don't know what the, how they're going to handle it. I don't know what I'm going to hear when I go into the hearing. But it's going to be an interesting time, and uh, as I said, I'm going to have at least two witnesses, uh, and maybe even maybe even some more. Uh, and I say not witnesses, observers. They are not witnesses. They're not going to testify of anything. A witness is one that testifies. They're simply going to observe, and then they can later testify what they observed. But they're going in as observers. They're not there to to offer me any advice or to give any at any information or to provide any testimony. They are there only to, to witness the proceedings. So it's going to be an interesting day next Friday. Today I'm going to, of course, file these papers. Uh, one of them is going to be sent by notary presentment to the judge. Uh, and he's going to need to acknowledge his oath of office. All of, I'm requiring each of them present their oath of office, each of them being the judge and any other attorneys or officers of the court participating in the hearing. They must present their oaths of office prior to to even allowing the hearing to go forth. Without their oaths of office, it makes the whole thing void 
and that's depriving me of my natural rights under the Constitution, which is what Title 42 lawsuits are all about. So I'm providing this information to you as just an overview of my situation. I'm feeling really good, although quite frankly, I'm tired. I've been up already. God, it's been over three hours, over three hours already. I've been out of bed. And uh, it's going to be a, a long day, but a very interesting day. I'm going to be able to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish by today and getting everything filed. So thank you for listening. And I hope some of what I've shared is of interest to you. And I'm sure with all of the unlawful foreclosures going on, you're going to at least know somebody, even if it's not you, you're going to know somebody that's going through some of this. So some of this information uh, may be valid. And there's lots of stuff online, lots of information, but you need to do your homework. It's not about just using what somebody else has done because each individual case has its own peculiarities and must be addressed as an individual case. It's not about using some template that one size fits all because that's just simply not the way it is and that's how you get yourself in trouble. Uh, so you can't use what somebody else has done in their case because it may not exactly apply to yours. But we do have remedy and there is uh, rest, uh, restitution being made, uh, reparations I should say being made for some of the wrongs being done. There's going to be debt forgiveness. All of this is coming to an end, coming to a head this year and it's people like me and many others like me that are standing in the gap and just telling the court no more, telling the authorities you don't rule over us as I did in my conclusion, concluding remarks, opening paragraph. So once again, thank you for listening. Namaste. Have a beautiful day. God bless you.